All right, so now we are ready to get our Studio One song set up for working in Dolby Atmos and actually mixing this track. Now this is going to apply regardless of whether you're working in a 7.1.4 system or you're mixing at home on headphones using either Apple Spatial Audio, whether that's standard or HRTF with head tracking, or whether you're monitoring the binaural, which is coming from the native integration of the Dolby Atmos renderer in Studio One. So I've got a list over here because I don't want to forget anything. The first thing that I want to go over is ground control sphere. So this is what I'm using to actually control the volume of my Dolby Atmos system. So I'm using a Studio 192 and a DP88. Now by default, if I take a look at universal control, I actually have my mixer bypassed, but I'm using the stereo pairs of all my outputs. So I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm using the first four outputs of my ADAP bank. So ADAP bank one, uh, one and two, and three and four. All of these are being routed for my speaker setup. So that's the way I'm working with it. But that doesn't really help me out with respect to controlling my actual gain on this system. So for that reason, instead of investing in a hardware monitor controller, I will actually be using ground control sphere for this. Now, what this allows me to do quite simply is I'm using, instead of my Studio 192 in Studio One, I basically set this so that I'm using Sphere 16, which is a virtual device. And then in Ground Control Sphere, I can actually route the output to my Studio 192. So you can see over here, I have all of my output routing, left, right, center, LFE, left surround, right surround, left rear surround, right rear surround, and then my height speakers, left top front, right top front, and left top rear, right top rear. You can see the routing directly over here. So this is the application that I'm going to be using. So we need to set this up in Studio One. I'm going to head back into Studio One for a minute. So we've talked about this. And the first thing that I want to do is set up my IO setup. So I'm going to open up my console. Let's actually close this for a moment. I'm going to click the IO setup in the top over here. Right now, if we go into, if we take a look at what we're, what we're working with, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to select all of my inputs. Let's do select and let's delete everything. Uh, some channels are still in use. Yes, we're going to delete everything. And I'm going to select all of my outputs, everything, and we're going to delete it. I want to delete everything. Yes. Okay. Now we are going to click apply. Okay. So now a couple things happened there. Obviously I lost my listen bus. I'm not too worried about that. Let's close this just momentarily. And I'm going to collapse these plugins over here. And also what I'm going to do is on these, these are the main outs. I'm going to remove all of these plugins. So we're going to remove all and also this limiter, we are going to remove all. Okay, so now the next step is that we need to basically set this session or this song to be using spatial audio. So I'm going to open up the song setup. And if we go into the general tab, and uh, we will click the spatial audio. And now instead of surround, I'm going to choose Dolby Atmos. When I choose Dolby Atmos, we have the ability to choose the mode. This is obviously going to be Dolby Atmos. Now this is important. As of Studio One version 6.6, .6, we have support for Dolby Atmos composite beds. What this means is that we're no longer limited to having a 7.1.2, which basically kind of mono summed your height speakers. I'm going to choose 7.1.4 as my bed format. If you're interested in more information of this, you can find a video on this on my YouTube channel. And then in terms of output format, let's set this to 7.1.4 because that is going to match my room. We will click apply and then we will click OK. So now in terms of our routing, if we go over here and we take a look, I'm gonna go back into the IO setup just for a moment. If we go to outputs, notice that sphere one through 12 is the actual 7.1.4 setup. And then my headphones are using sphere 13 and 14. I have this set up for a reason. And the basic reasoning for this is because I need to be able to record my stereo outputs or my binaural or my Apple spatial audio that will be happening from studio one. So this gets sent out, but if I were to open up ground control sphere really quickly, let's make sure that we're set up over here. You don't have to pay too much attention to this. All you really need to know is that I have this option over here where this is listening to sphere 13 and 14, and then this is being sent out and this is what I'm actually going to be recording for this video. So what this means is that if we play anything from this point, let me, let's actually just isolate the two mix just for a second. We'll solo this. This is being recorded here. 
I can turn this up or down. But this is exactly what's being recorded for this. And notice that my headphone routing is set to 13 and 14, and my 7.1.4 is being routed to my mains. Now my mains currently right now, they're not on. If I do turn them on, it'll get very loud, and I'm just working on headphones right now. But this is the way that I'm going to be setting things up. Now, also take note in terms of the headphones, we have the ability to listen to either a stereo or a binaural. And the binaural settings over here are going to depend on what metadata you have. So everything right now by default is routed to a 7.1.4 bed track. So if I switch over to the binaural, we're gonna hear some basic binaural processing that's been applied to this. Go to near. I will say this for now, I'm going to leave binaural on, but in terms of the uh, rendering modes or the binaural modes, the metadata that adds that kind of room spatialization, I'm going to leave that all set to off. Now, there's a couple other settings that I want to take a look at before we wrap this video up and actually get moving in, into the bulk or the majority of this session is that I wanna take a look at the manual trim controls. And we've already made sure we took a look at that. So it's basically the manual trim controls that we have from within the Dolby Atmos renderer. So I'm going to open up the wrench icon. And now if we head over here, notice that we are enabling the additional headphone output, which I'm gonna use for now, but when we switch over to listening to the Apple Spatial Audio portion of this series, I'm gonna to have to disable that so that we can listen to the Apple Spatial Audio because you, you have to kind of do a couple workarounds in order to get that going. But this is pretty important over here. I'm going to set this to direct render. I'm not gonna over explain why, I'm just gonna say that either direct render or direct render with room balance are the two best modes to choose. And then in terms of this, we're gonna leave this exactly as is. Now, in terms of these different ones over here, by default, I'm going to make sure that these are all set to be zero so that we're not gonna have any trimming that's happening. And I'm pretty sure that if you didn't select this checkbox that that would be what it's doing anyways, but I just wanna make 100% sure that what I'm mixing on my 7.1.4 is getting sent out to the headphones and that everybody is going to be hearing exactly what I want. So these are the main settings again. In terms of our 5.1 and our 5.1.x down mix, this is set to direct render. You could also use direct render with room balance, but I prefer direct render. And then this is going to be L-O-R-O. -O. And then for these three, we're making sure that there's absolutely no manual trimming done. Now at this point, this is all set to go, and we are ready to actually monitor this. I'm on headphones at the moment, and if, if, if I press play, we're listening. But if I wanted to activate my room, all I would have to do, I could simply just enable my speakers, and then let's see what my trims are at. Let's go to something like, maybe we'll go to uh, minus nine or something. And if I press play now, So that is coming out of my mains. Now, the other thing to take note of is that everything right now, all of these tracks are routed to the left and right. So this is something that we're gonna have to take care of case by case, but essentially we're ready to go. We've done everything that we need. All the routing is done. I've kind of explained why I'm using this particular piece of software. It is simply for volume control to be able to solo speakers and everything like that. But we know that our routing is good. Our 7.1.4 is set up. We verified that in our IO setup. Our inputs, we don't need any inputs at all. And our bed and our speaker format match each other. And then we know that everything that you folks are gonna be listening to, it's either going to be the stereo, the binaural, and at one point in the series, we're also going to be toggling to the Apple Spatial Audio. So that is it for me in this setup, which is my mobile setup, which literally means that I take my main mixing desk and I move it into the corner of my room right by my left speaker. 
And if I have to do some basic work, like getting a mix ready or something like that, this is where I will do it. And I will usually just use my Apogee Boom, but at the moment here, I have everything connected to my mains and my Studio 192 and my DP88, and we are ready to start this series. So I will catch you in the next video where we will actually be in immersive mode. I will be in a different position. And instead of monitoring through here and with this camera up close, I will actually be monitoring on my 56 inch TV and everything that we're doing. I'm also gonna have the binaural or the stereo running so that we're recording that and I'll show you exactly what we're listening to. But in terms of what I will be doing is I will be monitoring and mixing through the 7.1.4 and we're gonna start to break down this mix. So I will catch you for more in the next video.